Memorial Day 2021. I just want all my kids that I coach out there to understand uh, what this day means and how many baseball players paid the ultimate sacrifice um, protecting our shores and our freedoms so that we could play baseball today and go to school and, and be free. Hall of Famers like Bob Feller, Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio, Stan Musial, Willie Mays, Pee Wee Reese, Warren Spahn famously interrupted their careers to serve in our military. Yogi Berra took part in the D-Day invasion before his major league debut. Clemente and Carew in the Marine Corps, Jackie Robinson in the Army. Um, but there were 535 baseball players that lost their lives uh, serving our country. and. Uh, I just want them to be recognized today, and specifically the 12 major leaguers. These are their stories. Robert Neighbors, uh, he made his big league debut at shortstop for the St. Louis Browns on September 16, 1939. He would appear in seven games uh, with two hits and 11 at-bats. He joined the Army Air Force on May 8, 1942. After World War II, Neighbors chose to stay in the military and he saw combat duty during the Korean War as an invader pilot. Uh, and he lost his life at the age of 34 on August 8, 1952, and uh, he's the only major leaguer uh, to die in Korea. Harry O'Neill uh, was a three-sport athlete at Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania. Upon graduation, the six foot three, 205 205-pound catcher signed with Connie Mack's Philadelphia Athletics and spent the rest of the season as the club's third-string catcher. Uh, he would see action in just one game on July 23rd as a late-inning defensive replacement in a 16-3 loss to the Tigers. Uh, he played two seasons of semi-pro baseball before enlisting in the Marine Corps after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in December 1941. As a first lieutenant in the 4th Marine Division on March 6, 1945, during the assault of Iwo Jima, O'Neill was killed. He was 27 years old, uh, one of only two major leaguers to die in World War II. Elmer Gedeon. Gedeon, a three-sport star from Cleveland, Ohio, excelled in baseball, football, track at the University of Michigan. As a junior, he ran an American record tying 8.6 seconds in the 70-meter hurdles. In 1938, he was the first to match Jesse Owens' 7.2 seconds in the low hurdles. But baseball was his true love, and he signed with the Washington Senators on June 3, 1939, where he played just five games. He was drafted into the U.S. Army in 1941 and was later transferred to the Army Air Force, where he earned his pilot's wings. Gideon survived a fiery plane crash uh, when a B-25 clipped trees during a training flight in North Carolina. But on April 20th, uh, 1944, he was shot down uh, in France. He was 22 years old and the first major leaguer killed in World War II. Robert Troy. Uh, the German-born Troy grew up in western Pennsylvania. In 1909, he had a tryout with the Phillies, but he spent much of his time in the minor leagues. He had the speed and the curves, but lacked control, said the sporting life. On September 15, 1912, Troy made his only major league appearance, starting for the Tigers against Walter Johnson and the Washington Senators. Troy shut out the Senators for six innings before allowing six runs in the seventh. The Tigers lost 6-3, to three, and Troy went back to the minors. 1917, Troy joined the Army. He died in combat October 7, 1918, in France. Ralph Sharman, Sharman of Cleveland, Ohio, made his big league debut on September 10, 1917 with the Philadelphia Athletics. In 13 games for Max Club, the outfielder hit 297. Following the 1917 season, Sharman joined the U.S. Army as a corporal. On May 24, 1918, he drowned in a training exercise in the Alabama River. Sharman was 23 years old. Newton Halliday. The Chicago-born Halliday struck out in his only major league at-bat with the Pittsburgh Pirates in the second game of a doubleheader on August 19, 1916. He joined the United States Navy as the U.S. entered World War I. In September 1917, while stationed at the Great Lakes Naval Station in Illinois, uh, Halliday contracted tuberculosis. He fought the disease valiantly for over six months, 
but passed away on April 6, 1918. He was just 21 years old. Eddie Grant, Harvard Eddie, they called him, from Franklin, Massachusetts, played baseball and basketball at Harvard University before going on to play 990 games in the big leagues. Over 10 seasons, he posted a lifetime average of 249 with the Philadelphia Phillies, Cincinnati Reds, New York Giants. He appeared in two games of the 1913 World Series for the Giants. Grant retired after the 1915 season and began practicing law in Boston. When the United States entered World War I in April 1917, Grant enlisted and served as a captain. He entered France in April 1918 and was killed on October 5th of that year, becoming the first former major league player to be killed in action in World War I. Harry Glenn, a left-handed hitting catcher from Shelburne, Indiana, played six games for the St. Louis Cardinals at the beginning of the 1915 season, finished the year with the St. Paul Saints, where he hit 296 over 63 games. He remained with St. Paul through August of 1918 when he was drafted into the United States Army. Glenn served as an aviation mechanic in St. Paul. In October of 1918, he developed a bad cold, which turned into pneumonia, passed away October 12th at the age of 28. Laverne Chapel, they called him Larry. Chapel, a lefty hitting outfielder from McCluskey, Illinois, was hitting 349 for the Milwaukee Brewers of the Class AA American Association when the Chicago White Sox purchased his contract for $18,000. He made his major league debut on July 18, 1913, hit 231 in 60 games, returned to Milwaukee where his average soared back to 309. Later played for the Indians, the Braves, the Columbus Senators, and the Salt Lake City Bees. In July 1918, uh, he was leading the Pacific Coast League in batting average, left the Bees to join the United States Army Medical Corps at Letterman General Hospital in San Francisco, where he contracted influenza and died at the age of 28. Harry Chapman, a catcher from Severance, Kansas, made his big league debut with the Cubs against the Cardinals at Chicago's West Side Grounds on the last day of the 1911 season. He was traded to the Cincinnati Reds, uh, where he was a fan favorite for his timely hitting and ease with the pitching staff. Chapman later played for the St. Louis Terriers, St. Louis Browns, Little Rock Travelers. After the 1917 season, Chapman joined the U.S. Army. He died at the age of 32 from influenza-induced pneumonia in Nevada, Missouri, on October 21, 1918. Alexander Burr. Uh, Burr was a shortstop and pitcher at Williams College in Massachusetts. He signed with the New York Yankees in January of 1914. Burr made just one appearance as a Yankee on April 21 against the Senators. In 1917, Burr served with the 31st Aero Squadron U.S. Air Service. He was killed on October 12, 1918, in France. William Stearns. Stearns was just 12 years old at the end of the American Civil War, but children were enlisted as drummers, messengers, and even soldiers, and Stearns' involvement is confirmed by his membership in the Grand Army of the Republic. Later, he was a pitcher in the National Association for the Washington Olympics, Washington Nationals, Washington Blue Legs, and Hartford Dark Blues. At the age of 45, Stearns volunteered to serve in the Spanish-American War. During the first landing of the U.S. Army in Puerto Rico in September of 1898, Stearns became ill and died several months later at home in Washington, D.C. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Those are the 12. Thank you.